So I met Abraham Lincoln's tomb in Springfield. These were his exact words before he uh, left for Springfield, before he left that only home that he had ever owned here in Springfield where he had his wife and children. Friends, no one who has ever been placed in a like position can understand my feelings at this hour, nor the uh, oppressive sadness I feel at this parting. For more than a quarter of a century, I have lived among you, and during all that time, I have received nothing but kindness at your hands. Here I have lived from my youth until now. I am an old man. Here the most sacred ties of earth were assumed. Here all my children were born, and here one of them lies buried. To you, dear friends, I owe all that I have, all that I am, all the strange uh, checkered past seems to crowd now upon my mind. Today I leave you, I go to assume a task more difficult than that which uh, devolted uh, upon General Washington, devolved upon General Washington. Unless the great God who assisted him shall be with me and aid me, I must fail. But if the omniscient mind and the same almighty arm that directed and protected him shall guide and support me, I shall not fail. I shall succeed. Let us all pray that the God of our fathers may not forsake us now. To him I commend you all. Permit me to ask that with equal sincerity and faith, you all will invoke his wisdom and guidance for me. With these few words, I must leave you for how long I know not. Friends, one and all, I must now bid you an affectionate farewell. This was the farewell address at Springfield, Illinois on February 11th. 1861, before Abraham Lincoln left to go to Washington, D.C., uh, become the President of the United States of America. And uh, right next to that, I'm looking, and this is where he is buried. You can see it right here. It's one of those things where it's nice to be able to come in here and reflect on uh, Lincoln and, and his uh, burial his life here on earth and to be able to see all the different uh, states of his ancestors on one side, states he lived on, head at the other, the presidential flag even. And uh, he's buried underneath this, actually it's uh, behind it and then uh, down 10 feet. And uh, this is a, a nice, uh, nice place to commemorate the life of President Abraham Lincoln. And uh, one of the things, you know, all the sacrifice he made, you know, having to go through all the turmoil of his lifetime, you know, to eventually be able to free the slaves, you know, sort of usher in a new era of freedom, I believe that was ushered in all around the world even. This is where it, where, where his body, his remnants lay. This is, I'm not, not too many feet away from that. Actually, I'm maybe, um, maybe at the most, I would say about 15 feet away from, from his remnants. You know, if I walk a little bit closer here, maybe I might be uh, even less than that. So this is a very, very wonderful time uh, to experience. You know, you're able to see here, you know, his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, uh, buried here. Uh, you know, she, believe it or not, uh, you know, spoke French. And, uh, uh, you know, she had seen her husband uh, killed there and had to live through that. You know, you're looking at uh, Edward, uh, buried. Uh, you know, he... He died young, a very young child, 
uh, William. Uh, you know, it's the case here that, uh, you know, William uh, would have died there before Abraham Lincoln died. And uh, Thomas, you know, Tad Lincoln, you know, died some years later. But uh, Mary there, Abraham Lincoln's wife, lived through all that. And, you know, you see, you see him buried, buried here with Lincoln. You know, on one side here, you got his family. On the other side, you know, you got, you got Lincoln. I'm going to walk around here and kind of give you guys a little bit of a tour here. I've gone through here before a few times, but um, I'm just kind of walking through. And, and uh, there's, there's some amazing, amazing, uh, amazing stuff here. You know, you see the Gettysburg Address here. I've actually gone into the home here of uh, President Abraham Lincoln here in Springfield. But uh, if you like to see it here, four score and seven years ago, her fathers brought forth on this uh, continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the uh, proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who um, here gave their lives that uh, that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a longer, larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot uh, consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or uh, detract. The world will uh, little note, not long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather than rather to be uh, dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task, remembering before us that from these honored dead, we take an increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here uh, highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth, that is Lincoln's Gettysburg Address on November 19th, 1863. So you can see that here. Like I say, it's 63. There's the tomb commemorating the fact that Lincoln died in 1965. So that was just a couple years before he passed, before he was killed. You know, I, I look at these things, I look at this tomb, and you know, I'm I'm reminded reminded of all the all the turmoil that people go through in their lifetime. People like Lincoln. Do you realize that in Lincoln's lifetime that uh, you know, sure he was able to see uh, you know the end of the end of uh, 
uh, what, what he had done in that time, but he was not able to see the end of what he had done in this time. So it's the case that sometimes people, they struggle, they do us right, they struggle, they do us right, and it might be at the very end of their life that they might start seeing the fruit of that struggle. And, you know, centuries later, they may not realize even, you know, all the good things that have come to pass as a result of it. That was sort of the case in Abraham Lincoln's life, that, you know, he, uh, he lived on this earth very shortly, and in that short time, he was not able to see, you know, the full picture of all that he had accomplished and the legacy that had been established, all those things that came forth as a result of it. So it's the case that, uh, you know, that's why it's important, too, that uh, people, you know, rightly believe and partake of the Lord and, uh, and are able to rule and reign in heaven, you know, through, uh, through you know, um, through sainthood, really. I mean, you know, that uh, uh, being in Christ and, and being purified in Christ and and uh, you know, able to to be part of of a living body of Christ, you know, even after their passing on this earth, you know, to be able to experience the legacy of the good things that they've left behind. And uh, I'll tell you, it's it's important. It's important that we uh, that we are able to have these things. One of the things as I'm walking along here in the Lincoln tomb, as I'm reflecting, looking here, and you know, it's Robert Todd Lincoln, you know, one of the Lincoln sons here, really lived the longest of them, and uh, as you could say, or at least the longest into our time, 1926 is when he passed, and, and there, you know, he would have been a pretty old man and uh, been able to reflect into our last century there, you know, some memories of his father maybe. And one of the things we see here, I'm looking at, uh, you know, Lincoln, the debater. This is uh, depicting the time in Freeport, Illinois history there, where, you know, it's the Lincoln-Douglas debate. Uh, is what's being honored here, where uh, Lincoln had backed uh, uh, Douglas into a corner. And, you know, Lincoln had lost that particular election because of gerrymandering. That's where he, you know, had lost because the congressional districts, or I'll just say that the districts um, had actually been realigned so that he would lose. Otherwise, he would have won that one. You know, because he, he had some scuffles there in, in public, uh, public life as a politician before he became president. Uh, he was here in Springfield, he was an attorney, and uh, his house is not too far away from the Capitol, actually. And uh, been to his house, pretty nice place. And I've actually worked in Springfield. Uh, I, well, yes, I have, and I've worked in Freeport, and uh, Freeport, it's uh, one of those places where I could imagine those kind of things happening, that, uh, you know, that you would have issues with uh, people, unfortunately, that uh, are corrupt. So, just put it that way, I had a history even in Tarday of being sort of a corrupt place unfortunately, but they're very generous there. It's kind of a strange, strange, uh, strange kind of thing. Now Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, you know, this is one of the sculptures here, and it, the original's in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's one of the places I had cousins that went to college in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now this one's by Laredo Taft. Now Laredo Taft, he, he did a lot of sculptures there, and he's got a sculpture of a black hawk there and it's around Oregon, Illinois. It's a huge, huge statue and uh, 
He had done many things. He actually was a great architect. You know, he had taken a, a house that was actually a, a castle from Germany, and he had it brought in from Germany brick by brick and had it reassembled there and around to Oregon, Illinois. And uh, pretty amazing. And uh, I'll tell you what, you can see what this place is like. Yep. And uh, there's a little description from Lincoln's second inaugural dress. You can see here, this is what the entryway is like. So I'm going back through again. It's hard to really avoid not going through again. But yeah, Laredo Taft, you know, his, his uh, German castle there, it's actually on like a hill. And uh, that German castle is now an NIU campus. It's called the uh, Laredo Taft uh, campus, I believe. It's like a recreational campus. And you see a little bit about the tomb. Uh, but here in this sculpture here, if you go to Dixon, Illinois, it's actually behind Dixon McDonald's. There's a, like a log cabin, and that's where Abraham Lincoln served as captain of the militia during the Black Hawk War. And this, this is the first statue you see when you come through the Lincoln tomb. And uh, it's one of the things there where I've worked in Dixon, I've been in Dixon uh, a lot for the course of about 40 years. And I used to get my hair cut when I was a child in Dixon for, for over 20 and uh, closer to maybe 30 even. But, uh, you know, used to go there almost religiously, I would say, and uh, uh, used to, you know, go past there a lot. Uh, but on one side of the river, you got the Lincoln statue in Dixon. And then on the other side of the river, you got... Uh, the Reagan statue, because Reagan, President Reagan also lived in Dixon and uh, as he was a boy. Now you would think that Reagan had gotten a lot of his uh, influence there from uh, Lincoln, but uh, the family was actually Democrat when they were, uh, when, when Reagan was young and uh, you know, they had never had a statue or picture of, of Lincoln in the home until of course, the uh, curator of the uh, Reagan home in Dixon uh, put one in there. And, uh, and eventually, you know, you know that uh, Reagan became a Republican uh, later in his life. So it's one of those situations where you come to a place like this and, you know, you see the statue here of Lincoln and, you know, you're, you're able to reflect and, and look and see, you know, Dixon, Illinois, and, uh, you know, think about that time, reflect upon that time when he was captain there of the militia during the Black Hawk War. It's one of the situations where it was a time when, you know, Native American Indians were more prevalent in this area. And, and they were, they were very, um, you know, they lived, they lived uh, uh, a lot more without you know, constraint as it were. And uh, one of the things to note here is that today, if you go to the Northwest Territory Museum there in uh, uh, Dixon, you actually, it's the old uh, high school that President Ronald Reagan attended. You can actually see in that a, a room, there's this classroom where President Ronald Reagan went to school. And uh, there's a kind of like a, wax figure of Reagan and, and uh, wax figure of the teacher and, and there's even the principal's office and everything else. Giant museum now and uh, you can go to the Reagan home and uh, then it's not far where Lincoln served uh, as captain of the militia during the Black Hawk War. So, um, but he did that when he was young. That's one of the, one of the interesting things here. But he lived here in Springfield, you know, and, and had his children here and, and, you know, had the only home he ever owned here. And, and uh, you know, and he lived here as an attorney and uh, for a long time.
So this is a reflection of when he was younger. And uh, you're able to see that and uh, really experience what that was like. It's one of the things when I, when I look at these things and, uh, you know, I think about all the time when I, I lived in Dixon, uh, I haven't actually, you know, lived there uh, as, as a home, but, you know, I lived about 11 miles away in Rock Falls. And uh, that's between the birthplace of Reagan and, and his boyhood home, Rock Falls is. And Reagan was born in Tampico. But, uh, you know, there in Dixon, uh, you know, I, I worked there for over 10 years uh, as, as a main focal place, focal point there for uh, a job I had. And uh, went to school, went to Sauk Valley Community College in Dixon, Illinois. Uh, went there for many years as well. And, uh, you know, I really had a lot of great education there. It's a, a really great place, Dixon is. There's a lot of great people that live there. One of the things that you, you want to note here is that it wasn't far from Dixon. It's actually in Grandy Tour. Some people call Grandy Tour Dixon even. But uh, Grandy Tour is where... Uh, Grandy Tour there is where John Deere uh, developed the, uh, the plowing technology, as it were, that, uh, you know, we, that really made him successful and uh, made John Deere what it is. He developed that in Grandy Tour. So it was early on, he was a pioneer in that. It was a polished steel plow, and uh, he had developed that technology. And early on, when he developed that uh, there in Grandy Tour, then uh, he became very famous, uh, you know, ultimately through uh, not only those developments, but also the uh, company that bears his name. So there was a lot of wealth uh, from maybe those early days that uh, was in, in, in the Dixon area. And then there's the fact that uh, Lincoln had served during the Black Hawk War over there as well. And uh, that really cultivated a lot of good things there, I'm sure for Reagan, when, when he was a child and uh, having lived in Dixon. So, you know, you're able to see a lot of the, uh, the great influence here. Uh, there's, you know, Lincoln, the Ranger, uh, pretty, pretty amazing. You know, he had a very diverse, diverse life. You know, a self-educated attorney. Uh, and I'll tell you what, these days, if you want to become an attorney, there's only like maybe one state where you could be self-educated as an attorney. Because uh, I know that uh, in Illinois and a lot of other places, most all other places in the whole nation, you, know, you have to have a Juris Doctorate to be an attorney. You have to be able to do the bar exam and and go through all that you can't just uh, go and be an attorney and uh, so but Abraham Lincoln you know he was during the time when, when you could and, and lots of freedom there lots and lots of freedom so here you're seeing this is a nice Lincoln statue you know the original is in Chicago this is a nice sculpture here and uh a pretty amazing, you know, you're able to see, you know, Lincoln, uh, the uh, circuit rider, yeah, pretty amazing, he's got his little top hat on there, and I'll tell you what, we're able to see Lincoln in his farewell address before he left uh, Springfield to go and uh, take on the position as the President of the United States. And it was in February 11th, 1861, talked about it, how he had his family here. And, and uh, this was the place where he deeply cared about. And, uh, you know, he was going, didn't know whether he was going to return or not. And it was during a time of great national turmoil. Uh, you know, and, and then here's his tomb. This is where, it's where he's buried. He's buried right 10 feet below. And then... Uh, 
you know, just behind this great, uh, this great monument, you can see all the states of his ancestors here, you know, the states that he lived in, and the presidential flag. Pretty amazing place. You, you're able to look and see, you know, there's, there's his wife. His wife lived uh, pretty much the longest of most all the Lincolns. And then, you know, his, uh, his, his children and his children, a lot of them died young, unfortunately, but uh, pretty interesting. One of the things when we look at this and we think about it, you know, it's the case here that, uh, you know, we have to be reminded, we should be reminded that, uh, you know, God greatly cares about, uh, you know, those people and that uh, do what's right, even against great opposition. And Lincoln did just that in his life. You know, and, and God, God cares about supporting, you know, God's mission in the world, you know, through people like Lincoln. Being able to put away, put an end to slavery, put an end to misery. You know, that Christ came in this, this earth to uh, basically set us free from sin, to, uh, you know, that, that we, would have, we would have freedom in him, uh, that he came in this earth, that, uh, you know, the devil's work would be destroyed. And uh, we look at this, we, we see this, and, you know, we see that uh, Abraham Lincoln was very fundamental here and, and bringing in a whole era of freedom. And uh, I was really able to, to do just that. And, and we're just, we're just right, like, just a few feet away, just a few feet away from his remnants. Like, this is as close as, like, the public could get, really, you know, like any closer the, to the, than this, and you would have to be, you know, somebody that cleans the inside of this place, and that would just be a few feet closer. So this is this is close as you can get to the remnants of Abraham Lincoln, you know, after he was shot and killed in Washington D.C., he was brought back here, and uh, uh, back behind this tomb. His, his remnants were put for a time. And, uh, and then when this was built, then he was buried. He was buried permanently in, in here. And uh, we were able to look and see and, and, and just really, really have the full experience of, of Lincoln and his life on earth and all the contribution that's made. And when we look at this and we think about it, this is a time, this is a time to to really be reminded, to be reminded that those things that we do on earth, you know, they could potentially have great impacts for generations, you know, and, and it could be good. That's what you want it to be, is a good, good lasting legacy for many generations, for many centuries, if at all possible. You know, you don't want future generations to be hindered because of what you've done. You know, you, you want future generations to be more free, to be, you know, more, more productive, to have more good things, to be blessed, to be happy, to love one another, you know, to, to be joyful, to, to be honest, to be good, to be righteous. You know, you want future generations to, to, to have uh, those good things about you, and even more so. And uh, one of the things that Lincoln's done is he's he's really uh, contributed greatly, you know, to our freedom, even all throughout the nation, you know, in the world even. And that's why it's important that we come to places like this, that we really reflect, you know, that we really, really think about, you know, what it means to be right to be right about what we do. You know, not just to be right about what we believe or what we think, but to be right about what we do, to do the right thing and to always do the right thing. And for those right things to lead into, you know, the, the greatest rewards, 
that, that could ever be experienced by future generations. In this case, you know, Lincoln, he, he contributed a lot to freedom. And um, so anyway, I'm going to come around here and, and uh, you know, there's the Gettysburg Address here. You're able to see that. Yeah. Here's, uh, you know, the, the oldest son here. Lived quite, quite, a, quite a long life, and even into our century. And, and uh, you're, able to see, you're able to see some of the, uh, you know, Lincoln statues. And I'm kind of coming back around pretty much to where I've, I've started before. So there's other videos, too, you can watch that I have. So anyway, on this particular topic, and, and then also, too, on, uh, you know, Grant went to Grant's house, and Grant served there with Lincoln. And I've gone to uh, to Reagan's house, and and I don't have videos of that, but I've got videos of the outside, and uh, you know, lots of lots of great stuff. So anyway, bye for now. God bless. God be praised. Have a nice day.